That song plays as you stand before the gates of hell. Hi again guys, and welcome back to hell. Most people are surprised by how accommodating and cozy it is down here. Thanks for the support in the last video, it did great and I really appreciate it. But a lot of people pointed out to me that I missed something really big. I completely failed to mention the video that L. Hugeni, the guy it was on, gets memed on the most for. The story of Undertale. This video is probably what has seared this guy's art style into the most amount of retinas. I saw it joked about on Twitter before ever remembering those Call of Duty ones I used to watch. And I completely forgot that I had. I really don't know what happened, man. I am off my game. I'm usually way better about this stuff. Regardless, I'm here to fix that issue and look through another landmark moment in animation history. One thing before that, though, and please don't kill me for this, I dropped a song, guys. It's called Pest by Quite. That's me! It's now available on all streaming platforms, and you can find it at the first link in the description. I, I know more YouTuber music is really what you wanted out of me, but how could I say no to another way of milking money out of you buffoons? Jokes aside, it would mean a lot if you guys gave it a listen. It's got lots of bars about gay sex, which is like my favorite thing. I'ma stay chest, last to smash like sore is. Pocket pussy got my penis redder than Corbin. His tip inside my mouth sucked the dick like I'm snorkeling. He blowing out my back, it's getting cracked like some porcelain. Even gay sex is still heteronormative. I take also, if you like this video, there will be this big card at the end that if you click or tap, will take you another one like it. I know this from seeing it happen in person, that when you click that big card, you become instantly more attractive. It's true. Give it a shot. You see, I really missed out on the whole initial Undertale train. I didn't really play it until like last year, and lucky for me, there was already two-fifths of a sequel out by then, which you can watch me play on my second channel. But you can say that being late to the station on this one was a bit of a double-edged sword. I missed out on a lot of those hard-hitting emotions and nostalgia that comes from new stuff being released in a beloved franchise, and also from participating in the fandom. I have to experience all of that history secondhand with, ugh, recap videos. But on the other hand, I got to spare myself the nightmare of this song ringing in my head as I toss in my sleep. I fell through a cave on Mount Ebon. I faced an evil talking flower in a pot. Explains the plot. Wants me dead, wants me to rot. I love how he just gave up on subtitles for this one. Even as far back as 2012, he was putting the lyrics on screen for us, so we had at least half a chance of understanding whatever the fuck he was saying. But for some reason on this one, he just left us to the wolves. <laughs> You're on your own. Figure out what words the robot noises are supposed to be yourself. He was just fed up with literally spelling that shit out. Those bones have names, Frisk. They aren't just objects, despite you talking about them like they are while they're standing right next to you. El Hugeni does this thing where he makes every character in these animations do some jaunty on-beat dance that repeats ad nauseum through the video. And Papyrus is here is just the most awful one. He is hip thrusting in the direction of a child. Dude, you cannot just do that, much less in public. And he looks so damn happy about it too. Like that version of the character needs to be on several watch lists and perhaps a few Twitter block lists as well. Should I be a pacifist, or should I use my fists? I'm feeling evil, think I'll kill them all. I really, really want to know how he picks the song he's going to parody for a given game. Like, Black Ops 2 Gangnam Style in 2012 made sense, because it was the easiest song to parody in that year. But what the fuck does Lady Gaga's bad romance have to do with Undertale? What the fuck does she know about Undertale? What about that song, Just Scream to El Eugeni, Rewrite My Lyrics to Be About Genocide? I wonder if he has, like, a random song generator that he lets decide for him. It picks by complete chance from every Billboard Top 200 song in the last decade for options. Can't wait till it rolls on Gucci gang. I do like that he's ascribed a lot of adult-oriented vices like alcoholism, getting into bar fights, being a homicidal maniac, you know, typical struggles of a young adult, to what is canonically a toddler. Like, if Frisk wanted to actually bash Papyrus on the head with a broken beer bottle, they would have to stand on a really tall stool and do a running jump off of it just to reach his height. And considering there's no jumping mechanic in Undertale, the fact that they managed it here is very impressive. <laughs> Stop, I'm feeling rude. <laughs> 
oh my god. Not only does it just skip the entire fight with Undyne, which is one of the most iconic moments from the game, straight to her with a spear through her chest, but he sets down deal with it glasses on Frisk's face like they fell from heaven out of God's butthole just to give him pink eye. The sheer amount of disrespect to Undyne here is insane. He couldn't even be fucked to animate her. He made two poses, one of her standing like a complete fucking goober, and another of her dead as hell. He didn't even put her in the opening chorus without her helmet on, just completely sidelined her. Asgard is shaking, he hears my approach. I'll slide her sands and squash his bro like a roach. Carries my coach. All these monsters I will pose. The idea of Frisk being some big game hunter killing off an endangered species because they're rich and that's their idea of fun as a pastime is very accurate in my opinion. And somehow, this isn't even the wildest visuals put to the song. Folks have remade this video so many times, it feels like it was published by Capcom. Literally right after the original video on the autoplay is a Family Guy version of Story of Undertale, and it's inarguably better than the original. <laughs> Put these two side by side, they're essentially on the same level of production quality. One just has noticeably more passion. Screw being a pacifist. I think I'll use my fist. I'm feeling evil, think I'll kill them all. I'm on the saddle and I've got a taste. I want to wipe out the monster race. You know, I've never heard someone described as having a taste in genocide. Like, I thought we were just all on the same page that all genocides have been bad. Like, of any potential genocide you could do, all would be in poor taste. Some folks are so scared of that word specifically that they will argue that while they might have done a little mass killing, you know, just for fun, technically it wasn't a genocide. You know, because that makes it better. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'd get like zero of these references. I've only done a pacifist run, and I refuse to do a genocide one because I don't want to ruin the good memories I've made with those characters I like, so I have no idea what a single weapon in this game is. I have lived in blissful ignorance where the whole world of Undertale is just farts and rainbows and nobody dies. It's all happy endings, and I finally get a parental figure for once in my life by the end of it. King Oh god, look how they did my boy Asgore. His face looks like it belongs on the end of one of the trains in Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't understand how you managed to make the drawing look flatter than the pixel art sprite from the actual game. This thing looks like a multicolored piece of construction paper. Children use this face for arts and crafts projects. They cut into it to make little paper snowflakes. <laughs> Come on! The Wilhelm scream? First, the deal with it glasses, and now this? El Hugeni was definitely just checking off the boxes as he went along making this. This is definitely what my target audience wants out of this video. If they see the funny glasses and hear the funny noise that they've seen and heard in a thousand other places, they'll surely laugh like the stupid, dumb, trained dogs they are. Okay, that's definitely an exaggeration, but I'm not exactly known for managing my jealousy in a healthy way, now am I? <laughs> Oh boy, that was a hell of a slog. If I had to compare it against the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 song parody, it definitely has got less on the shock factor, but I would say it's more holistically memeable, because this type of song being made for Undertale specifically is just more of a conceptual mindfuck. Like, how did this become the final product of that thought process? Whereas I can definitely see how FNAF 3 song parody came into being. Now, I said that this song has lived on in the hearts of the community as something to shitpost about, so I think it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't look at some of the conversation around I can always count on a video's comment section to create the content for me. Something about this art style makes me want to slam my head into a board full of nails. You know, something that specific makes it seem like he's thought about doing it to himself before, probably for different reasons, but the punishment stays the same. It's probably their go-to method. Genshin Impact fans, when I open their ribcage and slowly tear out their organs. A lot of the newer comments have degraded to really meta stuff like this, and it's not like I don't understand why. The fact that I haven't been driven to insanity by looking at this shit for a career is a miracle only made possible by my 
modern medicine and lots of cocaine. And that's basically modern medicine. But people using things as reactions for scenarios that are completely disconnected and out of place for the reaction they're using and still somehow having them make sense is some shit I would love to see either a college course or a museum exhibit dedicated to dissecting in the future. Anyways, that's about all I got for you today. Be sure to stream Pest out on all streaming services. Please, I am begging. There's plenty of El Hugeni to go around, so if this video does well, expect me to milk it even more and invade your sub box with his animations once again. Obviously, don't go after anyone I talked about today. This is all meant in good fun, and this guy is not hurting anybody with what he's doing or has done. Plus, you look stupid when you go out and do that anyways, so go out and stream Pest instead. <laughs> anyways, this has been quite, and I'm having a surgery soon. My spine needs to be internally realigned after bending over to suck my own cock in this video so much.